set me free from all my guilt and shame You search my heart through Jesus' seen I blame you, call my name, said I'm not sending you Whose heart would break for a nation 
whose eyes would weep for the lost Someone to carry the burden Who will be bruised for the cross Who bring their gold for the kingdom Speak up for the weak and ignore who would forsake some comfort To see one life restored Here I am, send me, Lord Weak as I am All my life I give to you to place into your hands Here I am, send me, Lord I will answer the call When you ask for everything I will bring it all cry of the countries in darkness and desperate for light stand and be counted for Jesus go ease the pain and the plight who we'll serve in this generation seek only the glory of Christ lay down their needs on the altar and wish you now offer their life here I am send me Lord weak as I am to you to place into your hands Here I am, send me Lord I will answer the call When you ask for everything place into your hands Here I am, send me Lord I will answer the call When you ask for everything I will bring it all
Um, and uh, I know it's an important way of encouraging and reaching out to people. And that's our desire that every week we should be able to just encourage you uh, to come to know Jesus a bit better. And maybe if you've never been to church, that this may be a way in which you can connect with God. And that's really important. And particularly, you know, news is so bleak, isn't it? You know, we, we've got um, sort of corresponding things going on. A terrible number of deaths through the virus. But yet the hope of the vaccinations and thank God for all those that are uh, just uh, performing those vaccinations right for our nation right now. We also need to pray for the world because in just our nation, but every country in the world needs this vaccine. And so today we're going to worship God. I'm going to pray. Um, it's my privilege to welcome uh, a, a member of our church, Donna, who's Donna's going to share testimony today. And uh, during the summertime, I uh, actually married Donna and Jonathan uh, down at Hannaford Point Hotel in Lou. We had a, it was a very obviously quiet ceremony because of the restrictions and so on, but it was a very precious day. And um, I look forward to hearing part of Donna's testimony later on. Uh, she's from a different Celtic nation, but we welcome her to share this morning. Later, I will uh, give a brief message. I'm going to be talking today on uh, the parable of the hidden treasure and um, the uh, precious pearl. As you may, may be aware, uh, since uh, the beginning of the year, we've started a series of Jesus parables, and this will run on Sunday mornings up until Easter. And I'm thankful for, for Becky and for Dennis, who've already shared, and I uh, will continue to share over the next few weeks. Um, and hopefully this will really encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Uh, there's a lot going on. Please pray for the church. Pray that, that God will be at work. A lot of changes coming this year. Um, but, you know, God knows what he's doing. And it's it's our role to get in, get close to him so that we uh, hear his voice and understand what his purposes are. Uh, if you feel that you want to give to the work of Clearway to help us with uh, this ministry online and to help people within the community, which we love to do, then please go to the website and uh, click the button and uh, it will tell you what to do. So uh, without any uh, more talk from me, let's uh, sing some songs of worship to Jesus. <laughs>
Hello, I'm Donna. Uh, most of you might know me from Cleary Church when we used to meet at the school. Um, when I was asked to record a testimony, my only problem was trying to choose which of God's amazing blessings I would choose to share with you. Um, as you know, or may know, I was recently married in um, August of this year and it was Martin who who married the two of us and um, I know that God brought us together and I'm incredibly blessed and happy but the testimony I'd like to give was a huge answer to prayer that God provided for me and my family. So um, just to put it in context I had been living in Australia and I returned to this country to um, visit my daughter in Plymouth and also to teach at the university uh, for a few months, which was my pattern. And on this occasion, my sister had been ill for some time, um, getting more and more weak and she couldn't eat. So she was living on vitamin milkshakes and I hadn't seen her for a year. Um, so when I saw photographs of her looking so thin and, and ill, I was very concerned about that. Anyway, um, the next thing I knew, she'd finally been admitted for tests to the hospital in Edinburgh. And she went in and fortunately or unfortunately, when she was there, she collapsed. So they admitted her and they were very, very unwilling to operate because she was so weakened with, it, with not having eaten for such a long time. And however, um, it became an emergency and so they took her in and operated on her and I rushed up from Plymouth to Edinburgh and hurried to the hospital to see her. Uh, she was in intensive care on life support and she was in a coma. Um, I wanted to be by her side, but the doctors made me wait uh, for the rest of the family, who also live in Scotland, her husband, her two daughters, and their husbands to come to the hospital. And when we were all gathered together, they took us into a room in the hospital that's known as the bereavement room. And in there, they, the doctor or surgeon spelt out to us that she was very weak. Um, he didn't even think she would make it through the night. He gave some detail about her condition and we were told to prepare ourselves to expect the worst. And at the time I asked him, I said, have you ever uh, had a patient in her condition who's pulled through? And he said, no, um, I'm sorry to tell you, that's never happened. Well, you can imagine the blow this was to all of us. Um, so um, I, I prayed oh, harder than I've probably ever prayed before. And I said to Jesus, I know you can do this. And you saved Lazarus and brought him back, in fact, and... If you could just spare my sister, she's got so much to live for, her grandchildren and the family and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, so I play, prayed fervently and uh, my niece Rebecca, she's the older daughter, my sister's older daughter, we even prayed through the wall behind her bed. And the next day, she, that's something falling off the wardrobe for some reason, Sorry about that. The next day she picked up and unbelievably began to um, make recovery. And I spoke to her holding her hand. She squeezed my hand. So though she was in a coma, she, she could hear me. And then I asked her if she could open her eyes and she managed to open her eyes a little. And from there on, she went from strength to strength. And she had been booked for rehabilitation after this in another hospital but she didn't require it and she actually walked out of the hospital three months after her, her admission and 
the staff and the doctors were applauding her and they said they'd never seen anything like it. And so that was God's enormous answer to my prayer and she's still well and enjoying life, although she's isolating. Um, yes, yeah, so she's, she's living a full life and thanks be to God for the answer to prayer. Um, I recently saw this year that they were planning a renewal for Christians in the form of um, the eternal wall of answered prayer. I don't know if you've heard about it, but you can go online to find out about this. And the plan is to uh, build a huge wall of tiles and it's going to be 51 feet high and each tile will tell the story of somebody's answered prayer in order to give people hope. And so um, this is something that I've donated to and I've also sent a shortened form of my sister's story. Um, the wall is outside Birmingham and it's 51 metres, not feet high. Um, and you can go on to um, a website for that or if you look up Eternal Wall of Answered Prayer, um, I'm sure it will generate hope to others. It's supposed to be a beacon to renew Christian strength and belief in modern times. So I hope that my testimony has been in, invigorating for you. Um, I feel enormously blessed. My sister's enormously blessed. Our God is incredible and good. And um, yes, and that's the testimony. Thank you for listening. Bye. Wasn't that good? Thank you so much, Donna, for sharing uh, part of your life story. It's so good to hear that. Uh, in, a, in a moment, we're going to um, pray and Liz is going to lead us in prayer. And in, a, in these days, prayer is so much important. You know, we have so much bad news, so much going on to distress us. And uh, um, we can make a difference actually by praying, by talking to the Lord, by bringing these situations to him. And it, God is a God who answers prayer. But, you know, he does say it's very important that we ask him. So that will be just so good. But before that, we're going to welcome back Sarah to lead us in some songs of worship to Jesus.
Good morning, everyone. Now is an opportunity for us to pause in prayer and reflection. Psalm 27 tells us that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So we ask today, Lord, that you keep us under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may know and rest in your comfort, trusting that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We bring before you those we know who are sick and those who may be struggling and who need a touch from you. We ask your blessing to be upon them and those who are supporting them through these difficult times. We pray today particularly for carers and for our NHS and frontline workers. Give them the skills and the strength they need for their roles. May they know your grace and compassion for them as they tend to those in their care. Give them wisdom and a knowledge of your love as they act as your hands and feet in the world. We pray for our families, our friends, our work colleagues and our neighbours. We ask that you keep them safe, that you bring healing and reconciliation where it's needed and that they can know your love and experience your blessings in their lives. We pray for our leaders in the UK and across the world that they may be attentive to your voice, to work for the good of those they serve rather than for profit and gain. May they turn away from schemes that exploit the poor and that ravage the earth and instead choose humility and compassion that truly seeks to serve the people. Guide them in your ways, Lord. In your mercy, soften their hearts and enlighten their minds. Lord, in your mercy, lead them, whether they know you or not. We pray for our community here at Clearway, Lord, and ask that you lead us and teach us as we plan for Martin's retirement and seek fresh inspiration for the coming year. Will you fill us with your Holy Spirit and equip us for the task ahead of us? Will you touch the hearts of those who you are calling to join us and give us great wisdom as we move forward. And let us end with a prayer from the Methodist Church. We are not people of fear, we are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety, we are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed, we are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. So it's been good, hasn't it, to uh, sing. It's been good to hear Donna's testimony and the prayers. Uh, and now uh, let me share on these two parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl the amazingly priceless pearl. Uh, but first of all, let's, let's have a think. What was the highest price purchase you've ever made? For many of us, it's a house, uh, maybe a car, piece of land, maybe a boat. I know some of you have boats and so on, you know, all sorts of things. Um, in uh, Manhattan, the highest priced parking spot was $1 million. So it's something like, depends on the exchange rate, it was something like £730,000. Can you imagine paying that for a parking spot? I know they're precious these days. Um, there is a bird feather that has been sold, a one bird feather, right, that's been sold for £7,300. Must be some feather, wasn't it? Some bird that uh, apparently has been extinct for a hundred years. So, you know, there's, there's a job to get these feathers, but imagine paying that. 
um, those of you into music, you know, you can buy a crystal piano. You look at this online, it's amazing, it looks amazing. And it's £2.3 million pounds to buy this piano. Or if you're into cars, you can buy a 1963 Ferrari GTO uh, for £38 million. Pounds. You know, if money's no object, there's all these things that you can spend money on. But, you know, what is really worth spending all your money on? Let's read from Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. In these two parables, the focus is on the kingdom of heaven. Now, what's the kingdom of heaven? Well, another name for kingdom of heaven is kingdom of God. And uh, ultimately, the kingdom of God is the place where God rules. And it's the place where good always wins. Obviously, you're aware that on this earth, we're not living in the kingdom of heaven. Now, as Christians and as people who believe in Jesus and follow him, we can be a part of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, but we are not physically living in that kingdom because all around us we see bad things, we see evil things, and we see that so often there are things that depress us and pull us down and they're obviously not part of God's perfect plan. We're in a pandemic. It's not part of God's perfect plan. But the amazing thing is that even in the midst of this, God is at work. He's at work in your life, in my life, in many lives right across this nation and indeed across this world. And it's important that we look to see what he is doing. And, you know, in these days, if you're like isolated and you're at home, God can be speaking to you. God can be at work in your life. He can work his amazing purposes out in your life right now. But let's look a bit more. You see, it talks about the kingdom of heaven in both of them. And then it likens it to two things, treasure in a field or this most amazing pearl. And in both instances, the person who finds the treasure and the person who finds the pearl is willing to sell everything they have to get this precious item. And what this tells us is this, is that the kingdom of God, and ultimately who's the king in the kingdom of God? The king is Jesus. So being a part of that kingdom and knowing Jesus, what Jesus is telling us, this is the most precious thing in the whole world. Now, what these parables aren't saying is that you can buy your way in or you need to buy your way in. But what it does say is this, what is most precious to you? You see, as Christians and as human beings, we can put our trust in so many things. And I want you to know that everything will let us down except Jesus. Jesus ultimately is the only one that can offer us eternal life. He is the only one that can offer us um, justice because in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, there is absolute perfect justice. You know, at the moment, our justice system's in a bit of a mess and there's so much backlog, so many things that, that we're waiting to, to see happen. They're going to be dealt with, even within our own family, there are issues that we won't dealt with, you know, but you have to wait and wait and um, but in God's time and in his kingdom, there is perfect justice. In his kingdom, there is perfect love. In his kingdom, there is just this amazing guidance. 
In his kingdom, fear is done away with. In his kingdom, depression goes. In his kingdom, death and suffering and separation is no more. Do you desire that? Do you desire that more than anything? You know, that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to start desiring him more than anything. St. Paul had this to say. This is in uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing great greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. See, Paul, who before he became a believer, he was one of the most uh, influential Jewish leaders in his day. He was a young, up and coming, dashing young man, you know, ambitious. He was going to really make it in life. You know, even though there was a Roman rule, you, you could still, as it were, make it. And he was going to make it. And then he had this encounter with the living Lord Jesus Christ. And he was willing to let go of everything to know him and to follow him. What about you? What about me? Isn't it time that we let go of all the things that distract us and we really look to Jesus for help. You see, our world uh, is going to go through, it is already, but it's going to go, go through financial turmoil for years. You know, even if the pandemic was over tomorrow, it would go through it for years, but it's not going to be over tomorrow. So we're going to go through years and years of financial turmoil. There's going to be a lot of issues and a lot of uncertainties. But and so today I want to give you some certainties. The kingdom of heaven is never shaken. Everything in this world may be shaken. You know, you might see, you know, some of the companies that we have always been there might go. You know, some of the things that we've relied on may not be there anymore, you know, and, uh, you know, we don't like change. But Sharon and I quite talk, often talk, you know, about, you know, we used to go to Plymouth, you know, you go into shops. And a lot of the shops we used to go, they're no longer there. They're gone, you know, and they never return. But the kingdom of heaven never changes. It's never shaken. And when I say it never changes, I don't mean it's going to be out of date or old fashioned. The kingdom of heaven is always full of love. It's always full of warmth, like this fire. You know, this fire behind me, I have to keep stoking it up. I have to get it really stoked up for these videos. It looks nice. You know, I want to give give you something good to look at because, you know, everything's miserable, isn't it? And, and I'm not the most, you know, handsomest guy. So I thought, right, let's put some fire wood on the fire. But that, that changes, you know. In a few minutes, it'll die down and be gone. We change. But our God, he doesn't change. He is always full of mercy. He's always full of love. He is always trustworthy. His kingdom is such a good place to be. You know, we all like our summer holidays, you know, whether it's in this country or abroad or whatever. We like the warmth and like the sun. A lot of us do anyway. If you don't like that, maybe you like the, the snow and all that and the, the, uh, and the cold, you know, and you like the skiing and all that. Holidays, they bring such a warm feeling, sort of, then. The kingdom of heaven can give us a warmer feeling than any holiday. Jesus Christ, his presence can make such a difference in your life. Will you reach out to him today? If you've never reached out, you know, even if you like listen to these talks or whatever, if you've never reached out to Jesus, then maybe it's time. You, you say, yeah, but I, I don't want to give everything. That's okay. Neither did I. I don't want it. But, you know, somehow when you get a taste for him, when you get a taste for the kingdom, all of a sudden you're willing to let go of the things you thought you never could let go of. And you know, whatever you give over to God, he always gives more back. 
And just one final thought. When I'm talking here about these two parables, and it talks a lot about you know the the um, the land, the the, buy, the person who's going to buy the land, and the uh, merchant talks a lot about them giving everything. You know, I'm not meaning that you've got to sell your house and you've got to give all your money away. Sometimes we've had that sort of idea. You know, that's what Christianity is like. No, it's not. But what it is is offering your whole life to Him. So. You offer your home, you offer your money, you offer your life, you offer your vocation. Lord, show me how I can be of benefit to the kingdom with all that I have. And it's very rare for God to lead people to give everything away. It's more likely he would say, okay, use your car for me, use your home for me, use everything you have for me, I entrust it to you. That's what God's like, you know, because he loves and cares for each of every and every one of us. So I want to encourage you today to know this, that no matter if you don't see anyone during the week, even if you're struggling, that God cares. He's right there with you. And as you reach out to him, like a little child reaches up to a parent when they're in distress. Like a perfect parent, God reaches down. And he'll touch your life and change you. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the stories in the Bible. Thank you for those wonderful parables that Jesus gave to us. And they're just so simple. Today, my prayer for everyone watching this video, help each one to dig up the treasure, help each one to possess the pearl, help each one to give their life to you. And those of us that have done that a long time ago, forgive us for when we take for granted all that you have done. And help us to remember all the blessings of being part of the kingdom of God. Blessings of our sins forgiven, our rebellion quashed. The blessings of a new life and a new hope. The blessings of a new beginning. The blessings of eternal life without pain, without suffering, without death, without loss the blessings of knowing your voice. We ask our prayer through the precious Saviour's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that as you go through this week, with its ups and downs, as there surely will be, that you'll know Jesus' hand on your heart, on your head, on your life. Bye for now.